Planning a trip around the entire country of Scotland on either a budget of time or money is a bit of a challenge. But here's what I've learned. Two years ago, I got the opportunity to spend 10 glorious days in Scotland. And within those 10 days, aside from some of the isles on the northwest portion of the island, I was able to see a vast majority of the country. But planning was the trickiest part. The first thing you need to do is make a list of places that you want to visit, whether historical site or distilleries, and then go from there. But most importantly, here are some key do's and don'ts of planning your next trip to Scotland. Do. Put a few castles and historical sites on your trip. There are so many castles in Scotland, you can make an entire trip just out of seeing castles. There's also the ancient town of Scarra Bray on Orkney, or even the Overton Bridge, where legend has it dozens of dogs have committed suicide in that bridge over the last few decades, and nobody knows why. Do. Plan to take as many ferries as possible. Not only is this a great experience, you'll be able to share whiskey with a bunch of Scotlanders you'll meet along the way, but you'll also save yourself countless hours of driving the narrow and sometimes dangerous Scottish roads. Do. Spend a night or two in Speyside. Speyside is just about in the middle of the island, a little to the east. And let me tell you, if Scotland is the land of Scotch, this is the capital. There are so many different distilleries within spitting distance. Glenlivet, Glendronic, The Macallan, Abelur, Balvenie, Benriac. You'll have a few days easily out of all of these. I personally would suggest getting an Airbnb near or even staying in the Highlander Inn. Their whiskey list is massive and pretty good prices too. Do. Pick out a bottle and open it while you're touring. Why not? There's no reason to take every single bottle you purchase back to your home country. There's nothing better after a long day of touring distilleries to have an evening dram. Personally, on our trip, we selected the Abelor 16 and the Glendronic Portwood. And let me tell you, it was well worth it. Do. Before you go on this trip, Try to get a good understanding of the prices that you're paying in your home country versus the prices you see in Scotland. Essentially, you don't want to worry about lugging all of these bottles back because you think you got a deal, and then all of a sudden you see it for 20% less in your local store. Another thing you can look for is specialty bottles that just simply don't ship to your home country. Bottles that you will never, ever have the chance to purchase. For U.S. pricing, the Dalmore Distillery, which is a distillery just north of Inverness, they sell each of their bottles at least 30 U.S. dollars cheaper than what I have seen in stores in Arizona. When I was there, I purchased the cigar malt for about $100 when the store down the street, I would have to pay $150. It's a 50% markup. Deal of a lifetime. Don't. Don't explore too much. There is so much to do in Scotland and a lot of land to cover. Unfortunately, a 60-mile road trip in my home country would take about an hour. In Scotland, you have to double that, especially with new drivers, the curvy, winding roads. You're going to be going about 30 miles an hour, and that's if you're lucky. Oh, also, fun fact, the signs mean miles per hour, not kilometers per hour. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. The last time I saw a sign that looked like this, it was in Mexico, when it was kilometers. Look similar? Yeah. Don't. Don't rush the drives. I'm sorry, I need to double down on this one. I may have been run off one of these Scottish roads due to a tour bus. Yeah, that was... Not a fun afternoon. I feel like I'm going to have to tell that story at some point. But in reality, the Scottish landscape is absolutely gorgeous. You should absolutely stop periodically, stretch your legs, take some pictures. And there's a reason why the Scots haven't built any super highways across the country. They don't want to ruin that natural beauty. Don't. Don't rush out of your bed and breakfast in the morning. 
a lot of these bed and breakfasts, they're actually bed and breakfasts. They're not Airbnbs. And Scots take that seriously. Unfortunately, due to tour times and tight schedules, we had to do this a few times. And there's nothing worse than perfectly fitting the stereotype of rude American tourists. Take the time to get to know your hosts and take the time to get to know the other guests as well. You can sit, enjoy a hot breakfast, complain about each other's countries. We complained about their roads and they complained about our president. Don't. Don't be afraid to change your plans. With these days, you can go with a very nice bread and breakfast or a cheap Airbnb. There might even be some hotels in Inverness. On our trip, we made the mistake of only spending about a half day in Speyside originally. Once we drove through that, there was no way we weren't coming back. We spent a lot of time on our first ferry ride rerouting the entire trip, and it was so worth it. Don't. Don't take too much whiskey home. I know, I know, you might think that you're getting a really good deal on these scotch prices, but once you get back home, customs, they can hit you with taxes or even fines for trying to take too much stuff in. Make sure you look at the allowances before you go. I know there's a limit in the US, and our customs was actually pretty lax. They didn't even look, but we met a few Canadians on our trip, and our northern neighbors aren't getting away with much. Those Canadians are not to be messed with going through customs. And that's what I have, both do's and don'ts of planning your trip. Make sure you start planning far in advance. Make sure you check weather, ferry options, rental cars, fly into Edinburgh, fly into Glasgow, take a little puddle jumper over to Inverness or Campbelltown. Plan the trip that you want to do. And if you don't have enough time, if you don't have enough money, cut the trip into half. Come back another time. It's a fantastic country that you're going to want to come back regardless. 